Hello students. Today I will teach you the third lesson of Flamingo. It's a deep water written by William O. Douglas. Actually, it is an excerpt from his book of Men and Mountains. William O. Douglas, he belonged to USA. He bachelor completed his bachelor from uh, USA University in arts of English and economics. But he started as a career in legal advocate for individual rights. And he gave 36 year service in the history of the court. William Moore Douglas told in the story about his fear of water. As we know, in foreign country, the single source of entertainment is water. Swimming, boating, fishing, canoeing. So that's why he started the story with his fear of water. When he was 10 or 11 years old, he started to join the YMCA pool to learn how to swim. YMCA pool was in Yakima city of USA. It was safe pool as it was two or three deep feet deep while on the another side it was nine feet deep. He just started to learn but his childhood fears recalls in his memory as he was three to four years old he was standing in the beach of California with his father when the surf came and swept over him. He frightened her. His father laughed but from that time the fear of water just settled in his mind and he avoided to go to any near the water as he understood the overpowering of the waves. But anyhow he just start swimming in YMCA pool by apping the other boys. He felt comfortable within four to five days. Then another miss happened, happened to him. As he reached to the pool a year before its time, he didn't dare to go inside alone. That's why he sat outside the edge and waited the other boys. Sudden, a big British boy near about 18 years came and he just picked him up and threw it into the deep edge of nine feet. William o. Douglas was drowning in the sitting position. He didn't out of wit. He made a plan that while he will reach to the bottom, he will kick and come to the surface. Then by kicking leg and arms, he will save and reach to the pool. As he was going down and down, he tried whatever he planned. But unfortunately, when he came up, he came very slowly. Only his nose and eyes came out of the water. Again, he started the journey in the deep shallow nine feet. Again, he may, uh, tried the same what he planned that he will come to the surface and will kick and reach to the end, edge. But again, now he was tired. His lungs was ready to burst. He felt freezed, rigid, still grab, and his legs feel paralyzed. But anyhow, third time he tried again. But now there was no hope. There was only water, yellow water, dirty water. He just wanted to cry. To cry, to call his mother, his father, but nobody was there. No one was there that would help him. So in the end, he just gave up 
and left himself to die. After that, when he came into the sense, he found himself outside the edge of the pool and lying on the stomach and vomiting there. And people were scolding the young Russian boy that the kid was almost drawn. But he said, I was just kidding. Later, he stayed three to four hours in the locker room and went home. That night, he wouldn't eat. His stomach was paining. He was shivering and front ender grabbed him totally. After that, he avoided to visit anywhere. But as the years rolled by rolled, his friends enjoyed themselves with fishing, boating, but his trips view because the aversion of water, frightened of the water came in, her, in his mind. That's why he just decided that he would hire an instructor. So on very 1st of October, he hired an instructor to learn how to swim. The instructor took a cable belt and attached him with his stomach belt and he taught him how to move above and back. Forth and back, he practiced at least three months. Later, in pieces, he taught him how to exhale and inhale the water service. Later, the kicking of legs and arms. Almost instructor took six months to teach him and then he integrated all the parts of swimming, of training and made him swimmer. He asked the Douglas to just swim a length. William O. Douglas did it and he said that I had finished. But William O. Douglas was not satisfied. He scared that if any day I would be alone on the pool, the fight ended will come. So he practiced alone at least three months alone in the pool. Later he went to the new hemisphere to practice in the lake. He practiced there. He crossed the length from one side to another and he made lot of trips to concord on his water fair. In the end, when he crossed all the rivers, then he feared that he had completed his learning, learning and he just uh, started swimming, boating, fishing and canoeing. William O'Dagley said that there is no fear in that. The fear is in fear. When someone who experienced both means first of all the fear of death and later he concord means came over of this water sphere. That person could understood him that what the experience William O. Douglas had in his life. That's it.